Hey guys, so recently I've been asked a question about environment variables and Node.js and how you can avoid committing them to your source code. So I decided to make a tutorial about this. So what I'm going to do from my terminal over here is I'm going to switch to my workspace directory. I'm going to switch to code realm and I'll make a new directory. We're going to call it environment variables. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change to that directory. So what we're going to do from here is we're going to create a file. Let's call it app.js. And I'm going to open the directory from Visual Studio Code. So now imagine that we had a Node application and we wanted to get access to to the node environment variable. Well, generally you would access environment variables using process.env. So what we can do is we can actually do a console log of that variable. So let's do a console log on that. Actually, I'm gonna close out the sidebar on the left for the time being. So if I go back to the terminal, I'm gonna try to do node app.js. And in this case, we actually get undefined. The reason we get undefined is because we never define that variable in our application. So if you're running on a Linux or Unix system, one way to pass the variables would be to simply supply them from the terminal. So you could do node environment, you could set it to development, and you could simply call your node app.js script. So if we do that, you could see that the variable is set to development. Now, like I said, this will differ between operating systems. The reason it works for me is because I'm actually running on Ubuntu 18.10. But if you run the same command on Mac OS, it should also work for you. Now for Windows, it's a bit different. So if you want to set an environment variables and pass it to Node.js from Windows, you could use the following syntax. So you could use the set keyword. You could set the variable, in this case, node environment to development. And then you can call your node app.js script like this. Now in my case, I get undefined, but on Windows, you should actually get a value. But in this case, you actually have to be careful because if you put a space between the two end symbols, the value of node environment variable will be evaluated as development space. So if you want to get rid of that trailing space at the end, you actually have to do set node environment to development. And then without any spaces, you put the two et symbols, and this will simply chain the node app.js command. So this will run two commands in order. So we could do node app.js like this. Once again, I get undefined because I'm running on Linux, but on Windows, you should see a value for that command. Now, because of the differences between operating systems, we could actually use a package, which is known as cross-env. So if I go to npmjs.org, and if I look for that cross-env package, this one actually allows us to pass environment variables to scripts across different platforms or operating systems. So I'm gonna go to that package. What we need to do is we need to install it. So let me go back to my terminal. I'm gonna do npm install dash dash save dev on cross env like this. So once it's installed, what we could do is we can use the npx command to run the cross env script from the command line. And we can supply the node environment variable, we could set it to development. And we can finally call node app.js like this. As you can see, we get development in the output. Now what about supplying multiple variables? Let's say aside from node environment, we also wanted to console log a port variable. This is very common in server-side applications with Node.js. So if I go back to the terminal, if I try the same command, we're gonna get development space undefined. That's because we never define the port variable. So if I go back to the previous command, what we could do is we can provide another variable. So I'm gonna set port to, let's say 3000 space node app.js like this. As you can see, now we get development 3000. Now, this is really only necessary if your project is intended to be used on multiple different operating systems. If you're only using it for yourself and you know that you're only gonna be running on macOS or Linux, or for that matter on Windows, you could use whichever method is supported on your operating system. So for example, I'm running on Ubuntu and that's why I generally provide variables like this. So I can say node environment set to development. I can pass as many variables as I want so I could pass port 3000, then I can call node app.js. And as I said, this syntax is also going to work on macOS systems. And now for Windows systems, you could of course use the set keyword. Now the syntax will be different for PowerShell environment. As I said, it really depends on the operating system. So in those cases, once again, you can use the cross and package. Now passing variables like this can become cumbersome, especially if you're passing a lot of them. So in cases like this, what we could do is we can actually look into the package JSON file, which I think I forgot to create. So I'm gonna do npm init-y real quick. And once we get our package JSON file, what we can do is we can go back to it and we can simply add a section for scripts. Now in this case, we get a test script, so we can actually remove it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a custom script. I'm gonna call it dev. So let's have a dev script. And then in here we can pass multiple variables. So let's say node environment development. We can pass port 3000. We could also pass other variables. So let's say host set to localhost. 
you get the idea. So what we need to do in the end is we need to call node on the app.js file. And the .js extension is actually optional in this case, I'm going to admit it. So once we create this script, what we can do is we can go back to the terminal. I'm going to do npm run dev and this will execute the app.js file with the supplied variables. We're passing node environment set to development and port set to 3000. Once again, you could also make use of cross env. So you could simply add a cross environment over here. And this way you can execute the script on any operating system. So if I save it back in the terminal, let me do npm run dev, we get the same exact result. But the difference is, of course, this syntax is also going to work on Windows operating systems. Now, the next question is, what if you have more than two variables to pass? It's easy to pass them from the terminal or even from an NPM script. In some cases, you actually have to hide those values. So for example, you have a set of values for your development environment. You might have another set of values for a production environment. In those cases, it might be useful to leverage a .env file. So if I go back to the terminal, I'm going to create a file. Let's call it .env. And inside of node env, I'm actually going to add a few variables. So I'm going to add node environment set to development. We're developing the application, so it only makes sense to set it to development. We're going to supply a port. Let's say it's going to be 3000. We can also supply host, local host. And of course, you don't have to separate them by new lines, but it can be useful for grouping or simply for readability. So as soon as we save this file, we need to find a way to pass those variables to app.js. In this case, let me actually add another variable. I'm going to call it host. And this would be the third one we added because we have multiple variables. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to extract them. So let me do node environment port and host from process and I'm going to use a bit of destructuring here. And once we do that, we can simply copy those variables and we can paste them over here. So now if I go back to the terminal, if I try to do node app.js, of course, we're going to get undefined values because we're not passing those variables from the .env file. So one thing we can do is we can use the eval command. If you're not familiar with it, we can run help eval. As you can see, this command is used to execute arguments as a shell command. So using the eval command, we could do something like this. So let's say eval node environment set to development, and we can call node app.js. So in this case, you could see that the node environment gets populated with development. We can also pass more variables. So let's say port 3000. Now you see that both of them get populated, the node environment as well as port. But of course, since we already have the .env file, we would want to pass those three variables to our script. So cat.env would actually be perfect. So we just need to find a way to pass the result of that command to eval. And actually it's very easy. All we have to do is we need to supply dollar sign opening and closing brace. We're going to execute cat.env. And finally, we're going to pass the last argument, which would be node app.js like this. So what this does is it loads the environment variables from .env file, and it passes them as configuration variables to node app.js. So we could actually go ahead and put that command inside of our script. So let's do eval. We're going to evaluate the result of cat.env. And we're going to call node app.js like this. So if we do npm run dev, we get the exact same result. And now if we wanted to export those variables, so if we actually wanted to make those variables available to the shell itself, so the shell from which we're running the commands, we could actually do so by exporting the values manually. So for example, we could do export node environment set to development. If we do node app.js now, you're going to see that the value of node environment becomes development. And that's because we use the export command to populate the current shell with this variable, assigning it to development. And once we run a child process on Node.js, this node environment variable will actually be populated. Now, of course, if we wanted to export multiple variables, since we already have a .env file, it'd be useful to populate those three variables into our application script. So we could actually do export using the familiar dollar sign, opening, closing parentheses, passing cat.env. So this will output all the three variables and also export them at the same time. So we could actually run that command. And once we do, we can now run node app.js like this. And you could see that all the variables get populated. Now, of course, if you open a new shell, 
So for example, I'm going to open a new tab. If I now run node app.js, the values would of course not be populated because the export command only makes the values available to the current shell. In fact, you could double check using the help command. So if we do help export, as you can see, the help command allows us to set environment variables and also assign values to them, but it only works for the current shell. So if I do it from a separate tab, the values are not available. But once again, if we do export, we're going to export all the variables contained within the .n file. And we we can also chain a node app.js command at the end like this. As you can see, we get all the values populated in our script. So now let's say you wanted to push your project to GitHub. So you could do git init like this. So this is going to initialize an empty git repository. So now what we can do is we can create a file called git ignore. Generally, you would want to ignore the node modules directory from your project on GitHub. So we could go to git ignore. We could add node modules. So this is going to ignore the node modules folder from source. In fact, if it did not have this entry, I'm going to save the file. Let's do git status. You're going to see that we get node modules listed, but because we don't want to commit those modules to our source code, we're going to add an entry for node modules. Now, if I do git status again, you're going to see that the folder gets excluded. And we also want to do the same for .env because in some cases you might have secret variables inside of that file. And this is in fact what the .env file is intended for. So if we add .env to the list, in fact, you could also add a comment, secret variables like this. And if we go back to the terminal, if I do a git status once again, you see that the .env file gets ignored. So now if you find it tedious to work with operating system commands, or once again, if you want to make the script available across different operating systems and platforms, what you could do is you could actually look into a package known as .env. If I look for .env, this package allows us to load variables from .env files. So all we need to do is we need to install this dependency. So let's do exactly that in my terminal. I'll do npm install env. So what we need to do now is we need to require that dependency and also call the config method on it. Let me go back to app.js. At the top of the file, let's do exactly that. Load the .env dependency and call the config method on the imported object. I'm going to do node app.js like this. And as you can see, we get all three variables. Now, if we wanted to add a script, what we could do is we can call node app.js from here directly. So we can now call npm run dev like this. And this will execute the same exact command for us. Now, if you don't want to load the variables explicitly, you could actually look into another package. Now, this one is called node env run. This one actually uses .env behind the scenes, but basically it allows you to run a script and load the .env file implicitly. So now if I go back to the terminal, so I'm going to instead install node env run like this. And now from the command line, we could do npx node env run on the app.js file. And as you can see, all the three variables get populated. So if you wanted to run this from a script using npm, you could actually go back to package.json. And here you could basically paste the same command to your dev script like this. And of course, back in the terminal, you could do npm run dev, and this will execute the same command. Now, personally, I'm not a big fan of .n files. I think they could be useful for a development environment where you want to pass some development specific variables to your application. But for production environments, I would say it's a lot easier to pass those values directly using your service provider. So for example, if you're using Heroku, you should be able to go to your dashboard and you should be able to supply all your variables to a secure vault. And this way, all of those variables will be passed to your application at runtime. So you actually won't have to store them in a .n file yourself. So the advantage is that those variables won't be available in the file system. So if someone gains access to your project, they won't be able to find the .n file and read the values from there. So this was environment variables in a nutshell. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.